Sam gratefully closed the door to his suite. It had been a long day. Humanity's expansion to the stars had been anything but smooth, and the discovery and introduction to other interstellar empires has only complicated their expansion. The establishment of a strong diplomatic court had been imperative, and Sam had been on the job longer than just about anybody else. He liked to think that there was nothing that could shake him anymore. After all, once you've greeted another species by urinating on their feet and having their gesture returned without prior knowledge or warning, well, you could get through anything. That it had all been an elaborate prank was something that still made him chuckle eight years later. Sam was the best. He never reacted, never offended. The things he had seen would shock and horrify most people, but not Sam. He prided himself in his open mind, his ability to see the cultural difference and be sensitive to them. It made him invaluable as a diplomat. His room was well appointed, spoke specially for his arrival, and he was grateful for it. The bed was actually spacious, an unfamiliar luxury for a diplomat that had spent most of his career on a starliner. Sam reclined, enjoying the unfamiliar Fred on the sheets. He had arrived just that morning and had spent the entire 18 hours since then in formal meetings. Sam pulled out a small data tablet and began making notes. Spend day being introduced to new species on planet 3.24. This species, called the Binaclias, are long-winded. Sam snorted softly to himself. Long-winded was just diplomat speak for arrogant and lacking the ability to just shut the hell up. Even by Sam's generous standards, this species was trying. And Sam was the first diplomat to meet with the Fatuenses, a species that was little more than sentient gas that apparently found it hilarious to accidentally get inhaled by unsuspecting humans. Sam was suspicious, as it really didn't sound like laughter when they were inside him. Sam shivered. That memory still made him feel vaguely dirty. Sam kept writing. They control this and roughly two dozen other planets. Look a bit like dolphins mixed with flies. New translators worked well, required no formal database. Began and completed functional translation within 10 minutes and had complete translation within one hour. Beginning tour of countryside tomorrow. Will be nice to get outside a bit. Sam set down the datapad and whistled to turn the light off. The tour tomorrow promised to be, well, it would be something. Sam stepped out into the bright light, using the provided umbrella type mechanism to shield him from the too strong sun. This planet was younger, formed less than 2 billion years after the beginning of the universe, and there were multiple suns that blanketed the surface of the planet. A vehicle pulled up in front of Sam, and his main counterpart leaned over to open the passenger door. His name, as close as Sam could approximate, was something like Lugui. Lugui opened his mouth, Showing the backward-facing, almost penguin-esque teeth, Sam's translator began squawking. Greetings, Diplomat Sparks. Are you ready to tour our beautiful country and see a beauty that surpasses any of the paltry vistas that I don't doubt that you see on other lesser planets? I assure you, what you will see today will... Sam, already knowing this would be a monologue that would require little of him, stepped into the vehicle, letting the soft squeaking from Lugui wash over him. Five hours later, Sam has said almost ten words. Sam was impressed with himself for getting that many words in. So far, Lugui had shown Sam rolling purple hills, small farming communities that were quaint and familiar in the way that all farming communities felt strangely familiar. Every new planet wanted to show off, wanted everyone to know why this planet was the best, the most important. It bored him more than anything. Sam knew this was a part of the process of meeting a new species, but it never made it less tedious. Finally, Lugui steered him towards a large, squat building that Sam had seen carbon copies of dotting the countryside. It was an ugly building, seeming purely functional in nature, and Sam was surprised to have it be part of the tour. Lugui kept up what was either a stream of conscious narration or the most subtle form of propaganda that he had ever experienced. Sam was led to the building, and the darkness was the first thing that struck him. The brightness of the planet was something that was difficult to adjust to, especially because their rooms were never truly dark. But in this building, darkness, true darkness, appeared to be the norm. Lagui stepped up behind him and offered him a pair of what appeared to be their version of night vision goggles. 
Sam declined. One, because his visor came standard equipped with night vision goggles. And two, because it was ridiculous to think their biology would be anywhere close enough for them to work for him. McGree shivered in a way that his translator told him was the equivalent of a shrug and closed the door behind him. Sounds began as soon as the lights were cut off. Soft shifting in the dark and quiet trills that sent shivers down Sam's spine. McGree began speaking again leading Sam up a set of stairs that would allow for a view over the rest of the layout. I am sure you are aware of the grand history of our people, but let me tell you again one of our greatest achievements. Over 500 years ago, our people were close to starvation. We had used most of the arid land for urban development, and what remained became unsuitable for continued agriculture. Our seas were close to empty, and we had discovered long ago driven most of our biodiversity to extinction. Then, a miracle. A new form of food was discovered, literally right below our feet. It took decades to build a system to house and manage them, but not they are lifeblood of our food industry. Sam listened, heart sinking, knowing what he was about to see. Triggering the night vision, he turned and was astounded. Hundreds, if not thousands of small creatures covered the floor of the building, some huddled in piles, others shuffling back and forth, whether searching for something or just wandering. Sam wasn't sure. He wished he was surprised. Though most species, including humans, had long left behind the practice of agricultural breeding, there were still those who clung to it. The Benaclia seemed to be one of them. Lagui droned on, highlighting the virtues of the meat and extolling both the taste and value it would bring on the galactic market. Sam rolled his eyes, unable to restrain himself, and prepared to tune out the literal voice in his ear. Which is why I think this meat could be a staple of the galactic diet, with a bit of help, we could expand operations to as many planets as help need be. Just imagine... Wait, Sam interrupted. McGree paused, surprised at the sound of Sam's voice. Um, why did you just say help in the middle of your sentence? Lagui looked surprised, according to Sam's translator. I do not believe I did, Diplomat Sparks. May I continue my discussion on why this is such a profitable commodity? Sam nodded warily and together they began pacing the catwalk that ran around the holding pen for the animals below. As they walked, feet ringing on the metallic grate below them, Sam began to worry about his translator. It was a newer model, and had worked perfectly all day yesterday, but was now interspersing words that made no sense in the context of the conversation. Sam heard at least three more helps, a few pleases, and at least one mummy, which seemed very strange. They finally paused at an overlook point, and Lagui finally stopped talking to draw a breath. In that moment, that brief space between words, Sam heard clearly for his translator, Please, sir, help us. He also heard a soft hissing that accompanied the translation. Sam froze. Please, no. Lord, please, no. No, 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 no. Slowly, Sam lowered his head, ignoring the words pouring from the gooey, and through his night vision visor, seeing a small family of the creatures, staring at him intent written on their faces. Sam paid attention, hoping it was nothing more than a coincidence. But then, the creature hissed, and suddenly, in the middle of the Gui's continued lecture on nasty agriculture, clear as day, came the words, Please, for my children. The next several moments were a blur for Sam. Something must have happened, because when the red cleared from his eyes, he was only the Gui's headless corpse. That was probably a diplomatic no-no, but Sam found that suddenly he was less concerned with the diplomatic process. Sam keyed up his radio. Event Horizon. This is Diplomat Sparks. I feel that I'm about to cause a diplomatic incident. Please initiate PF protocol. I'm about to go medieval on their asses. Excerpt from The Fall of the Binaclia's Empire, Chapter 1. The First and Last Diplomat, and His Final Words.